Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Peter Detoy and Rob Moore, and we uh, saying it like it is in This Is Football. And uh, we thought, guys, that this week, especially after the derby, let's look at, uh, and in particular with regards to Kaiser Chiefs, let's look at the comments we made four months ago in our podcast. I think that came out on the 12th of July, so it's almost four months four months ago. What do, you, what do we predict? What do we say? And let's, uh, let's see how we performed so far. But guys, before we start, please, your support and your enthusiasm towards the podcast means a lot to us. Please like, please subscribe and comment. We respond to, I respond to all your comments of guys, and I really enjoy responding. It gives a lot of feedback, gives us information as to how we should go forward. But Rob, straight into it, let me give you, when we spoke four months ago, let me give you some of the headlines that we, that we, uh, we got out of that performance about Chiefs' chances for the season. And we said Chiefs are underperforming, and the chances of them breaking that is, is pretty low. You said you thought they'd come in, they'd finish the season um, in the top, just off the top two. Yeah, I think you said, no, I, I said sundowns. Uh, around fourth. Eh? I said um, Sundowns, Pirates, and Super Sport to probably end up bad. Right. And I said they're looking at a fifth. Well, they're currently 12th. So they, 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 they're they behind our predictions. And we spoke about, you know, do Bobby and Kaiser Jr. back Chiefs for success this season? I think we can address that again. We, we spoke about what Chiefs need to fix for success. It's clear things have not been fixed, and we can address that as well. We spoke about who's in charge of recruitment. That seems to be a problem still. The uh, new signings haven't performed. We said the technical committee needs to get the act together. That doesn't seem to have happened. Uh, we spoke about the chief recruitment and planning having failed. That seems to have been proved correct as well. We said that none of their signings have been game changers, um, but, uh, and we can look at the success of their new signings. We said Chiefs management created this coaching fiasco. Well, it's just got worse. Um, we said that the Chiefs fans deserve, deserve better than what management is giving. And unfortunately, that looks like to be continuing. Uh, we asked who's responsible for Chiefs poor decisions over the years and can, fix, can Chiefs fix uh, recruitment. I think, and we, in particular, we said Chiefs management need to state their aims what, going forward. Are they, Chiefs management still talk about their vision and, the, and their plans. But there's no clear, they don't go public on this. And Bobby was on uh, interviewed, I think, on, uh, by the Sunday Times uh, on, on the weekend. And he spoke a lot about, Bobby Matwang spoke a lot about their vision and their plans and their vision and their plans and abdicated a lot of the responsibility by saying, well, we've had a change because of fans' behavior. Um, I don't buy that, Bobby. You, if, you, if you've got a vision and a plan, you stick to it and you explain it properly to the fans. And if they understand it, they'll, they'll support it. So I think that's a critical thing that needs to be done. So, Rob, let's just go back to, to what we said in that particular podcast and some of the headlines I spoke to. I mean, they're 12th. They're underperforming. You've been a club owner. You sat on that in that chair. Yeah. Peter, I, um, <clears throat> I think if you, you look at the average points per game achieved up until now, I think 1.16 points per game, um, that would place them to finish the season at the current rate would place them to finish the season where Galaxy and Royal AM finished last season, 10th, 11th in the league. Catastrophe for, for a club like that. Now, do I believe that it can continue like this? I, I would be shocked if it actually did end up continuing like this. But, you know... Um, there's big red flags and, mm. and you've got to, you, you know, they, they have to respond. Now they've put Kevin, they started this season off with, well, let's rewind to what we spoke about in previous podcasts that by April of last season, they should have known uh, Arthur Zwani wasn't going to be their coach for the new year. <clears throat> they should have started the coaching search then so that, they, by the time the season ended, they were ready to announce their new coach. New coach would have come in. He would have been able to watch the last few games of the season and and put his whole plan in place for preseason and got, got his new tenor up and running. Um, well, a new coach didn't come from outside. Uh, they ended up uh, uh, um, bringing... Uh, 
changing in Seki's role. Um, but again, I think well into the preseason, Peter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and am I correct? So uh, you, you changed his role he, when he became coach. That's when they changed his role. He was he was kind of technical director. Yeah, yeah. That. But that happened. That happened in the pre. Uh, did, did that happen already when the preseason was up and running? I think. Huh? No, he yeah, he was he was part of the the the, the committee buying you know choosing the players um, as technical director. But they brought him in when they when they fired Zwani. They brought him in just before the start of the season. Literally just before uh, just the before the start of the season. So, yeah. so again, Zwani did the preseason uh, training. What's that? Zwani did preseason training. Yeah. So again, that, that we we already I think spoke about that. That that was just a, a, a really interesting way of doing things. Should we say? Hmm. We then questioned along the way whether uh, us, like probably a lot of fans, uh, is uh, Nitzeki a, a stopgap or is hmm. he uh, is he the guy? For the job, um, and uh, well, yeah, he, he's well, gone I think, now. I think Chiefs <laughs> fans deserve us not beating about the bush. What I want to say, Kaiser Chiefs fans, we are lovers of South African football in totality. That means we love Bafana, we love Kaiser Chiefs, we love Atlanta Pirates, we love Mavaletti Sundowns, we love all the clubs, and we love South African soccer in general. When you love something, it's like your I'm not calling Kaiser Chiefs our child, but or family. When you love something like you like family, that does mean you have to tell the truth. It doesn't mean that you're right. It means that you care. So what I'm about to say now is 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 up, obviously up for debate, um, but it's because I care so much about South African football. Or we care so much about South African football, and I speak. I think I speak for the fans, and I, and I'm sure the Kaiser Chiefs, and I know the Kaiser Chiefs management and owners feel exactly the same. But facts don't lie. And we've got to look at the facts. So the Kaiser Chiefs coaching crisis that we had at the start of the season can happen to lots of cl uh, clubs. It hap I'm sure you, you've been a previous club owner. You may have had a, a coaching crisis um, um, at your time as well. I remember you, uh, you guys brought in Bruce at one stage. Sure. And you brought in uh, um, Bruce Schwabel I'm talking about, and you also brought in um, the late... Um, yeah. Uh, what's his <clears> name? <throat> was Bruce. Um, no, I, 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 Gavin Hunt used to be my coach, and in my, I think it was my first after seven or eight games when we got to the Premier League from the from the first division, mm. uh, I had to make a change. Yeah, uh, and and but you got to act decisively, and you got to yeah. you got to go with what you believe, and you got to go because the guy fits into what the vision is of what you want to achieve, and Great. and yeah. So so you made that change. So what, what I'm, the point I'm making is that, like you had to make that change when you were at uh, uh, um, Seven Stars, Chiefs also feel, felt they had to make these kind of changes right now. These are normal things in football. But however, if it was an isolated case, then I would say, because this Chiefs problem right now with the coaching situation I've got right now is their own, is their own doing. They, they kept Zwani on until basically the start of the season. Then they brought in somebody within the club, the technical director, because they need, really had no other choice because the guys that they wanted, they couldn't get. Um, and they were hoping that Nsiki would succeed. But where is the problem? The problem is in the facts. If you look at since 1999, Kaiser Chiefs have had 13 coaches. Of those 13 coaches, three have been successful. Those three are Mushin Ertegrel, who didn't win the league title, but he had the Fat Alice season where he won everything but the uh, league title. And uh, they played fantastic football, the club. The fans loved the success and they loved the style of football. Uh, he eventually left. And uh, the next coach, who, and his second stint wasn't successful. The, the, the second coach who was successful was Ted Dimitri, won the league title, and the fans also enjoyed the football that Ted played, and obviously a very popular coach. The third coach that was successful was Stuart Baxter, won the league title, and uh, club fans didn't particularly like the football, but he was successful. So in 13 coaches since 1999, which is a long period of time, the rest, 10 coaches have failed. Who selected those coaches? The management. Yeah. So there is clearly, and there's a, there's obviously risk involved in 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 getting a coach. But you yourself would know, when you're a big club, your chance of of failure with a coach is less than when you're a smaller club because obviously you've got more money, which therefore give, gives you a bigger choice of coaches, and you attract the better coaches. And secondly, you've got better players, and you're able to sign better players. So there's more chance of those of of your coaches being successful. So one thing the Chiefs management own and ownership have to ask themselves the facts say 13 coaches 
in, since 1999, three successful, 10 not. There is something wrong in how chiefs are evaluating and hiring coaches. The well, second well, thing, mm, sorry, Rob. Carry on, Peter. You, you're on a roll. Carry on. Well, so, <laughs> so that has to be addressed. We, they've got to, and the, what, the first way you address it, you know, Rolf, uh, Rob, I learned early in life, if you don't say this is your mistake or your problem, you give up the right to solve that problem. So if you say, well, if Chiefs are saying, well, it's not our fault that these coaches haven't succeeded or it's not our fault that the players haven't succeeded, you then give up your right to solve the problem. You only accept you only have the ability to solve a problem when you're man enough to stand up and say, we have made errors and the errors sit on our lap and therefore we've given ourselves the chance to solve it. And if you look at Sundowns, one of the reasons for Sundowns' huge success is the technical director Fleming. He's not a family member. I mean, Sundowns to a certain extent are also a family club. Uh, Patrice's son is, is running the club. But they've got a family member there who is com who's not... Uh, I've got an emotional, he can, he, can, he can be fired. He's got to make certain that his decisions keep him in a job. The family can't be fired. And I'm not saying they should be fired. I'm just saying a solution is to bring in somebody from outside with huge connections um, um, in the coaching uh, arena overseas to be able to say, knowing South African football, this is the kind of guy that will succeed at a club like Kaiser Chiefs. And at the same time, that, ind that independent person like Flame has been, been doing is able to, to say, this is the real Kaiser Chiefs style based on what you're playing right now in South African football. Because with all due respect to Bobby and to Kaiser Jr., they are not internationally aware of football. And, and the times have changed. We see so much football on, on TV you, that audiences have changed. The fans have changed. The fans' expectation has changed because of social media and so on. Your, 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 the, the window for success is shorter and shorter. And unless, in my opinion, she's bringing somebody from outside, from overseas, with an absolute except, exceptional track record in the game, not some guy from a, a lower league who's, who's an, a no-name brand, bring someone like Fleming, who, who's well-respected in the game, is going to cost them money, but he's going to be responsible for creating a long-term vision and creating short-term wins to make that long-term vision come true. And 13, 10 failed coaches out of 13 since 1999 says you're going to continue with that problem. They flick it, I think, when the coach <coughs> is the right coach. And if that sounds harsh, Kaiser Chiefs fans, I'm not, this is saying, it's coming from a place to say, let's get Chiefs back on a winning, because South African football needs Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns competing for the top three positions. And that's no disrespect to anybody else. It's great to see them come in. But those three teams are the three biggest teams, and they should be the nucleus of a national team and the nucleus of our, our success in Africa. And its, it's management has got to realize they, they, they are selecting coaches that are underperforming, and either the, it can't be the coach. They've selected them. And, and the second problem may be the scenario is not right for those coaches to perform either. Well, well, Peter, I would I'd make two comments on that. Point number one, um, you're hundred percent right. Uh, you need an outside guy like with a big reputation like a Fleming. If you're an, if you're an ambitious club and you 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 want to have somebody to be held accountable, whose job depends on decisions. You're hundred percent right. Okay. The issue then is if you go that route and you do appoint that guy. The, the critical thing is, are you prepared to listen to him when he tells you what is right and what is wrong and where's the way to go? Because there's no point having the guy if you aren't going to be prepared to embrace all of what he says. And, a, and those quality of guys leave the job after a certain limited amount of time because they get frustrated. Mm. So that's yeah. point number one. Are you prepared to, if you go that route, are you prepared to listen? Okay. Well, if Number, they look at their track which, record, if they look at, track record, they, if they look at their track record, they, your answer is in the, in the record. One would think so, but, but, it's not always, but it's not always like that. 
Mm. Football is a game where, the, where a lot of people think they're experts, including you and I, by the way. So, of course. And so it's, and it's, it, it's, a, it's a subjective, emotional sport. Um, but when you're a club owner, you have to listen to the guy who's coming in and expo exposing the warts and all. And you've got to be prepared to act on what the guy says. So if you ask me right now, well, well, what do you think, Peter? Do you think, given the nature of a club like Kaiser Chiefs, do you think a guy coming in, saying it like it is, who's got, uh, who's got, who's got the ability and the CV to be able to talk from the soapbox, do you think the nature of the, the people who own the club, are, they are listeners or, or not? Well, the answer to that is, is, is very simple. Is that the owners of the club obviously love the club. And the owners of, of the club have given their heart and soul to the club. And there's no discussion about that. And Kaiser... And their wallet. Correct. And Kaiser, in particular, has been a rock in South African football and has transformed... I mean, Kaiser Chiefs the institution in the country. they something that we should be proud of in the country. They, they, they've been trendsetters and so on. In answering that question, what's happened in South African football because of the success of the actual PSL in itself, when I was playing football, and I'm sure when you got involved in the game as well, when I, we went, when I was playing and was called the NPSL and the NSL in those days, all the players would have walked to go play for Kaiser Chiefs because they, yeah. a, they paid way more money, they were far better organized than any other club, and they, they also had the best players, and it was, it, the reputation was second to none. And they, they, were, they always won trophies with a league or a cup and so on and so forth. They were dream but, and they um, were glamour. They were the and dream club and the glamour club. And they were also better organized than other clubs. They were trendsetters and they were leaders. What's happened, yeah. though, is as the pure sales developed more money, the leagues got way more professional. To, the league has sort of caught up with Kaiser Chiefs because everybody's organized right now. They met, you know, some teams are more organized than others, obviously. But generally speaking, all the teams are organized. They're all organized from a coaching point of view. So the league's a lot more difficult to do well in. Yeah. And, and Sundowns have definitely taken that step up. And for, they've got more money to do it. But Chiefs and Pirates are not short of cash. And we're not talking about Pirates right now. We'll talk about them next week. Chiefs have, have to realize that, okay, the gap between them and the other clubs has got smaller. And the gap between them and Sundowns has got bigger. So they have to do something different. They have to make a change. The, the question then is, what Bobby and Kai, Kaiser Jr. and the chairman as well have got to look at and say is, are we able to make that change ourselves and get this right. The history, the recent history doesn't say that. Let's assume they believe they can. They've got to realize they have a small window to get this right because the fans are not going to say, we give you and the new coach another three years, another five years, another two years. I think that they have to realize that they need to bring in a top head of football who not that they can blame, that they say, listen, this is the guy we've brought in, guys. We've taken a slight step back. We are, we, we're giving him a full reign. We will use our advice and our expertise to support him. But at the end of the day, he's making the final decision. And that guy's got to go public and explain his decisions. Because the public are smart. They're social media. They need to know, why do you sign the striker? What is expected from him? How are we playing? There's, this, we're in the information world. And Chiefs' process of information uh, is they've got to understand and applies to all clubs in South Africa. They've got to understand that they've got to give the, their fans more information. The more information the fans digest, the more they will be aware of, of the problems and be more patient. And Chiefs of fans have run out of patience, hence the violence. Uh, they're blaming it on betting and fans not having money. Those are, those are abdicating responsibility. Fans want success on the field. They want the right coach and the right players, and they're frustrated. Ten years of nothing. That's what the problem is. But yeah. going back to whether they would accept it, I don't think they have a choice. It's not someone. It's not saying Bobby and Kaiser Junior. and and Jessica <laughs> and Kaiser Senior. You've got nothing to say. Get out the room. This guy is doing it at all. They've obviously got tremendous knowledge of South African football, and they must put their knowledge on the table. But at the end of the day, he's got to make the decision, and he's the guy who hired that coach. Whether it will happen, I don't think something's got to change. 
the current scenario is not working. They may get one coach in who does well and they win a trophy, but will it be sustainable? Can they up the game to challenge sundowns? And they've got to make those changes, Rob. That's, yeah. I, know, I think they don't have a choice. Egos have got to go out the window here. Peter, and, and the second point I was going to raise is, you know, the whole situation now with Nseki Gang and, and Kevin Johnson. I said uh, in the lo- one or two podcasts ago, the best signing Kaiser Chiefs made was Kevin Johnson uh, to come in as head of academy. And I, 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 I spoke a little bit about his, his excellent track record as, uh, in mm. that role. The first, <clears throat> the first challenging time Chiefs have since the appointment of Kevin Johnson they jettison him into the hot seat of the first team. Mm. So what does all this mean? That now the academy vision is now parked off on the side uh, because his focus is now on this sorting out the short term. Was it actually the plan all along that he was going to come in to the first team and not do the academy? You know, uh, who knows? Maybe... Sometimes people come into a club in a role, but where where they really see that guy is somewhere else in the organization. Okay, Great. so they just try to get them in the door. So so now you got to ask because for me, if I'm hiring Kevin Johnson as my head of academy, and he's a top guy and he's a he's a he's a market leader, I and I have then a problem with Nseki and the results. I deal with that. And I don't disturb why I hired Kevin Johnson. I, I deal with that I need a first team coach. And I and and what what and generally speaking, most times you fire a coach when you've done some homework and you've got more or less an idea of who could be your next coach because you've done a little bit of homework behind the scenes. So and now an international window like we have now is always the ideal time to bring in a new coach. You bring in a a new coach, certain players, yes, they are away with international duty, but there's certain players that are left behind. You let the guy get his his feet under the desk and work with what he's got. And by the time the boys from uh, a national team come back, then at least the whole place isn't like completely strange for the new coach. He slots in and he gets going. But at least he's had a period of time of... With, without league games and without the pressure of going straight in to a match four days later after you've been appointed. No, so I'm watching this window and I'm saying, where is, where is Chiefs heading to? Because I'm looking for the answer this window. Mm. That's, that's what, and, and I, well, we're sitting here today. We recorded this on Tuesday. I, I, I don't, I haven't heard of, of anything. So, so what is all of this meaning? Um, you know? Well, there's an interest. You make a very good point, Rob, which I'm going to address right now. But my message, my message to Chiefs would be the following. Um, and uh, I say this with complete modesty. The reason why Sokola Duma was so successful, and I've sold Sokola Duma, I'm no longer there. Some readers still think I am. Um, well, the reason why Sokola Duma was so successful is very simple. And why so many people bought 300,000 people, 400,000 people buying the newspaper every week, three, over 3 million people reading it, uh, millions on the website. The reason was successful with two reasons. And every single person who joined Sokla Duma were told the two reasons. And the, they, were, they were casting gold. They were casting stone. Kaiser Chiefs should be still casting gold with their colors. The two reasons. Are one, I said the vision. I said this, there's a vision here. It's very simple. I'm not your boss. The boss is the reader. And our only job is to make the reader happy. That's it. If the reader is happy, you'll see it in the numbers of the publications they, they buy and how many times they're on the site and the comments they're giving us. And we take heed of their comments and we act on their comments, not on mine. I took phone calls from readers and answered letters from readers before I did anything else. So, Kaiser Chiefs, fans first. That's the first thing. But not in words, in actions. I was available to talk to any fan and People who, 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 there are tons of people who still contact me um, about football in South Africa through those days. And anybody who read Soccer Duma, they'll be able to tell you. The second thing was the golden rules at Soccer Duma. And Chiefs and all PSL clubs need these golden rules. Six golden rules planning, 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 preparation, preparation, preparation. And if you get your planning and preparation right, 
The rest will follow. So if you look at, and this is an interesting point, Rob, you made about the new signings. So let's just look at new signings. If you look at the new signings of Kaiser Chiefs, a lot have been bought to create instant change. In, they can only have been bought to create instant success. Because if you look at the ages, you've got uh, um, Pulin Moby. He's 30. He certainly wasn't bought for the future. He would have obviously would have been bought to make an instant impact in the team and change the team. You look at um, Chivarriero, 30. Brought to make instant impact. It can't be for the future. You look at um, Marisani, he's 28. Obviously got to be bought for instant success. You look at uh, Matwethwe, 29. Obviously got to be bought for instant success. You look at the... And of them, who's been successful too early to sell Matwethwe? I think he's a very good player. I, I like Marisani as well, but, um, you know, eight games, he hasn't really set the scene alike. Um you look at uh, Shviaro, one goal in, in, in eight. No. You look at, I think Modi has been successful if you look at, uh, um, he scored three goals in 10 appearances. The defenders, okay, they, they've done, Castillo has been successful. He's, he's, he's 30, uh, 12 games played, uh, two, three goals. So I would consider him successful. I'm not sure where they're playing him, if they're playing him in his best position. But so at least half those signings <laughs> were 28, 29, 30, supposedly for instant success. They haven't brought it. So yeah. that again tells you, you know, where is this? And the Zwani came in last season to have a youth. The vision was youth. That's out the window now, particularly from the signing. So Chiefs management, uh, you know, have got to take responsibility and be open to the fans and say, these are the mistakes we made. These are how we're rectifying it. And this is why we believe we'll have short-term changes that will turn into long-term success. Rolf, you brought up the lead table. Okay, Rob, you brought up the lead table. 12th on the league, if you look at the, um, they've only they've won, they've won 50% of their games. Have they? I may be incorrect. Sorry. They, if you look at, uh, they, they, uh, um, they've scored 11 goals. That's, uh, they've scored 12 goals, one per game. They've got 11 goals against them, just under one per game. Uh, you, you spoke about the percentage points. That's rank average. They're underperforming. And yeah. what, what, where is going to be the change? They can't make any new signings till next till the next window. Yeah. Uh, and and, but, and but how do know, players? And that, yeah. that's that's you know that's part of the problem again. Like like uh, like we highlighted in past podcasts, um, you can't keep signing seven, eight, ten players a window, or, hmm. or at the start of the season and keep rebuilding a team. There comes a point where you've got to believe that you've been at this for X number of years now, and of my starting 11, <clears throat> these seven are, or these eight are perfect, and I need to just plug in two or three pieces that are missing. But it always seems like a constant rebuild at, at, at Chiefs at this mm. point in time, you know? And you just can't do that because then you're starting from scratch all over again all the time. And um, you, you, they got to get to the point where they find enough quality that can anchor their team hmm. and then start building around around that, you know? So, Rob, let's talk coach. You, you, you're based in London. You, the most, you, you know what's available internationally, uh, who would come to South Africa, who wouldn't come to South Africa. Before I go into that, Pizza Masimani is available. Chiefs fan, a lot of Chiefs fans want him at the club. Would Pizza Mani bring? Uh, would Pizza bring success to Kaiser Chiefs? And would you go for him? And then I'm going to ask you a second question: What kind of coach could Chiefs get from overseas? Because Kevin's obviously going to take continue with the youth. He should. Well, we don't know that. There's been no. Uh... Uh, there's been no, nothing that's come out of the camp uh, at Kluokop, uh, uh, sorry, Kluokop. Uh, it's come out of Chief Village to say that that is the situation. We don't know that, okay? Have you spoken to Kevin? I haven't spoken to Kevin since he's no. been appointed now. Right. Um, but... So let's talk so, pizza. Yeah, come back to pizza, okay? Top coach, top coach. Um, uh Obviously, would be an ideal candidate in a lot of ways. Knows the South African setup, has been uh, has experienced uh, coaching abroad, uh, was successful even before. Uh, well, 
was at the heart of uh, the sundowns as we know it of today. He was mm. at the heart of that whole building process. So he, per, perfect uh, uh, guy to do it. Would he come? I don't know. I, I think Peter probably enjoys being abroad at this point in time. Um, so I, I think it wouldn't be an easy one to get, but it would be a great one if he got it, if they got him. If they didn't get pizza, then what? So um, before you get the next one, on my comments on pizza, if I was Kaiser Chiefs, I would literally break the bank to get him because most of the fans would uh, um, would, would give him time to get the team successful. He also wouldn't take nonsense. He would demand the players. Uh, he would almost force the club's hand on, on who to sign uh, because he plays an active role in signing. He would, uh, he would give the, the youngsters a chance that were good enough uh, he wouldn't if they weren't good enough. So if they could afford him and they could talk him into it, I would jump because he knows the South African scene well. I tend to agree with you that if I was managing Pizzo, which I'm obviously not, I think he's got a lot, a lot more to achieve and he can achieve and will achieve a lot more overseas. Um, there's more money um, and you can job up there and make a fortune. So I, I don't... I think from a personal point of view, he'll probably stay overseas, but he would, I, I be, think, he would change. I, I think Peter probably needs to get to a point where he says, well, I've made enough money. Um, now I want to have one last project. Hmm. And, and, and that, that would then be the time. I, for me, for me, there's only really two South Africans. who could take, who could do the job at Chiefs. Uh, is Peter and I, and I think Benny. Benny, because of his personality, because of the respect that players have for him, his ability to manage a locker room, his ability to call a game during the game situation. But, you know, we're talking about in, in Peter and Benny, two very strong characters and, and who, who want things done and done properly. Their tolerance levels are low. For, for things that aren't done properly. Um, so again, is Chiefs 100% ready for that? You know? But uh, 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 Rob, I mean, okay, you, we, you have an intimate knowledge of Benny. Um, he's your player or your coach, I should say. Why would Benny leave Man United? I mean, Man United is one of the biggest clubs in the world. No, no, I, uh, I'm, just purely, I'm just purely saying from a point of view of South African potential guys who would know the league, know the country, know the... the, the of an intimate knowledge of, of what, where a club like Kaiser Chiefs needs to be because they know historically and they've experienced it. They've been in the middle of it, uh, of the glory. I agree, agree with you on Pizzo, but I, I would be failing all the people watching this podcast, Rob, uh, if I didn't ask you the next question, is that, I mean, if Chiefs phoned you and said, listen, can we have a word with Benny? What would you say? I need to speak to Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, next uh, right. case. Let's, let's take Benny and let's take Benny and Pizzo kind of out the equation. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay. Pizzo so what? There, and, and what if, characteristic? I, I wasn't. I, this is genuine. I wasn't thinking of Benny. Um, um, he's got the personality. The fans love him. Um, he's ex pirates but I don't. I think he's one of the few guys that cover. You know, all South African fans like, love him. It, he's done well at the clubs that he's been to. Chiefs would be the biggest club. But anyway, but he's been a Man United. You don't get much bigger than that. I don't know if somebody would leave Man... I don't know if I would leave Man United for South Africa. I mean, you know... You, you, but anyway, that's a separate issue. That's um, a separate issue. What kind, of, what kind of coaches are available internationally, though, Rob? I mean, there's so hmm. many... Co it's not like players. There's so many coaches about, really top, top coaches. Um, what kind of coach... If Chiefs were going to get somebody from overseas... You know, we, we keep regurgitating these guys who, who sort of coached in, in, in Africa for a few seasons and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They're almost like journeymen who've never really made it um, or they're, you know, quite kind, kind of elderly and so on. What, what, kind of coach, what kind of coaches are out there that um, you don't have to name names? I mean, what, what uh, kind of coaches? Characteristics. Coaches? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Peter, I would... Realistically, Chiefs could get. Yeah. I mean, we must remember now that that besides coaching in Europe, uh, a big draw card for the better coaches is coaching in the MLS 
You know, money's decent, lifestyle's good, they're going to host the next World Cup. So you've got, you know, uh, uh, 30 clubs there, 29 clubs that are competitors to the PSL, right. okay? Or competitors to Kaiser Chiefs. Um, so if I'm 100% honest, the likelihood of being able to pick and choose top, top coach, it's unlikely. So Obviously. Kaiser Chiefs will need to go. Uh, what you need to do is you need to find the modern day type of a guy like a rude crawl. You know, a, a guy who's, who's been in the game, he's played at the highest level, uh, he's coached good clubs, he can come and adapt into new surroundings, and he has experienced new surroundings. Whether those surroundings... I mean, remember Arsenal signed Arsene Wenger when he was coach in Japan, mm. you know? Um, and everyone said, well, who's this guy? You know, and mm. well, you know, as we sit here today, we know exactly who that guy is, you know? Uh, Poster Koglu uh, came to uh, Glasgow Celtic from Yokohama or, or mm. wherever it was in Japan. But so you going to go to Japan. <laughs> well, the, what they've got... You got to find you got to find a coach who can who can travel. That's the bottom hmm. line, and and travel I mean take his skill sets into a new environment, and he's got a record for doing that. Now, does it have to be Africa? I don't think it has to be a guy who's no. got African experience, but it's a guy no. who has shown that his skill sets can travel, hmm. um, show that he can embrace a local culture and work with people locally but who is quite, is prepared to put his marker in the sand and say, I accept uh, local this, local that, and all this, but in the, this is where the line is. The, the, I draw the line at this point. And, mm. this, and, and at that point, it gets done in the way I'm telling you it's got to be done. So, so that, you know, you need, you, that, that's the type of coach you need, you know, and, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and you've got to find, but you're not going to find him of the of the of the elite tiers. It's not going to happen. So, you're talking about tier, probably tier three, because mm -hmm. even tier two, I would say most coaches would go to um, to to like maybe Danish Premier League before mm -hmm. coming to let's say Kaiser Chiefs, because it just keeps them in the game. In, in, mm. in within the the biggest regional market in the world, and that's Europe. Okay, mm. so you know uh, there was a, actually a very good coach that I I I, uh, I, I gave a CV to um, to Kaiser Junior, a guy who has got a track record, having worked at a federation for their national youth youth teams, a guy who's won trophies at senior level in a league that is top, I think, top uh, 15 of Europe. Um, and uh, he's basically been a winner. Where he's gone, he's, he's done well and he's overachieved. Um, yeah. And he's an experienced guy. And um, But, uh, yeah, probably they wouldn't when act you, on it. When, when did you give that CV to Chiefs? I, I think a few weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so, in other words, for... For, Recently, for, this is recent. Oh, I see. This okay. Is, okay. Yeah, this is All recent, right. and uh, you know, and 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 I know, and and I know this guy you're not, because you're, you're not going to name him. No, no, I'm not going to name him. I can tell you that exactly. It was three weeks ago, uh, the last week right. of October, and um, right. and uh, well, they certainly haven't come back to me, and I don't think they've come. They've gone back to him because I, he would have told me. Um, hmm. But this is a guy that, uh, what I try to do, Peter, I try to put myself in the shoes of the club because I used to be a club owner, okay? Mm. You know, a lot of people know me as, as an agent, but I was mm. a club owner, you know, and, mm. and at IS Cape Town, I was the largest individual shareholder. So, mm. and, and, and that IS Cape Town was my vision. You put, so, the, you put the whole, you put the, for, the people, for people that are out there don't know, Rob put the whole deal together where Cape Town Spurs and Seven Stars did a deal with uh, um, AX, AX Amsterdam. Amsterdam. AX Cape Town was an incredible deal. Great for South African football. I mean, 
accolades yeah. to you for making that happen. So Rob knows what he's talking I, and, about and, in this. But Peter, I don't, I don't say that and bring it up to blow my own trumpet. What, I, what I'm trying to just say to the maybe more modern day listener hmm. is that you don't put me in the box of an agent. I, hmm. I've been around the block and I've owned a club. So I know hmm. both sides of what we're talking about here. So if I send a CV of a coach that I think would, would, should be worthy to be considered, I do it from the point of view that if it was me and my club, would I consider this guy? And the hmm. answer is 100% I would consider him. And, and um, so, yeah, so, I, so which, which makes me think that either they've already got somebody and they're waiting to tie up the loose ends well, it can be one of three things. They've either got somebody waiting to tie up the loose ends, they make the announcement, or they're going to announce Kevin permanently there, which then will be a tragedy because, again, you've shifted your your the, the very reason for having employed Kevin in the first place. You've now changed that on a whim. Um, or they actually don't know. They don't have anybody. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's... Difficult to express you it. In you, words. Haven't, you, haven't, you, haven't sent, you haven't sent them Benny's CV. No, no, no. I haven't sent them Benny. <laughs> Benny, Benny, well, uh, Benny, everyone knows Benny. Everyone in South Africa knows his CV. Well, I think, Rob, it's very clear that time, it's now the time for Chiefs to, to change the course of which they've been going. Ten years without a trophy. Only three coaches in, in, in out of 13 have been successful. They've got to get the right coach this time. I think that not only do they need to get a, uh, the right coach, and they've got to be very careful where they, where they get this coach from. And if it's not Pizza Masimani, it's got to be somebody who, who, who they could almost say, this guy is going to be successful fans. We're going to give him three years no matter what, um, a kind of, which, which uh, Ivan did with Root Kroll. Um, that's the first thing. And I think at the same time, they've got to get in a top technical director who's going to work with Kevin, with the youth, and work with a senior coach and do analysis on players because the game's too big to have just one guy making all the decisions. The, the, the ownership have got enough knowledge of the game that to support all of that. They've just got to pick the right guys. And maybe they should be talking to their neck. Getting their, making their net wider of who they speak to to help them get the right guy. And that means not necessarily yourself, but people like yourself. And getting hold of people like Arsene Wenger and, and top contacts that Kais, I'm sure, has and say, listen, can you give us the names of three guys that you think could make a long-term difference to our club? Um, that's what I would do. But um, yeah. I think uh, we've, we've covered most things. Have we left anything out, Rob, uh, uh, Rob on Chiefs? You know, the interesting no, thing I say, they... they mm -hmm. Uh, no, I think just really just echoing what you said. We, we're not here to bash Chiefs over the head or any club over the head. We're here because we want uh, a successful Chiefs because a successful big three, big four or four clubs in the league is what a league desperately needs. So yeah. uh, so whatever said is said, as you say, out of, out of a passion for the game. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. We want... We want the glamour boys to be glamorous again. You know? Exactly. That's, exactly. That's what we want. We want when chiefs arrive in town, they're filled, full, the houses are full. We want uh, the, the, the Fauna side packed with Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns players competing. We should be able to, we should have three Bafana teams that are good enough. Uh, yeah. Not struggling to, you, you can't even name the Bafana players right now. You, I speak yeah. to fans who can't even name the Chiefs lineup right now. Anyway. Yeah. Guys, don't forget to like and to subscribe and comment. Your comments are vital. This may have sounded like a controversial. We're not having a go, um, as we said before. Rob and I will be back um, earlier, probably next week again, with uh, looking at um, a, a subject that's very close to all of our hearts, Bafana Bafana, and where the changes can happen there. We'll chat about Pirates and Sunda and the African, Super League, uh, African Football League and Sundowns with the fantastic result they've had. But Rob, thanks a million. Guys, thanks so much for listening hope you listen to the end it's been uh, it's been a pleasure rob thank you thanks peter cheers